I'm not sure if I'm even qualified to even speak on Bitwig Studio, but I have been using Bitwig for quite some time. I am a Studio One user, pro user, but I love working in Bitwig. Ableton is another one I love working in. I have the push tool. I love the integration, the workflow between Ableton and the device. Which leads me into one of the things on my list, actually. Uh -huh. I was wondering if Bitwig is, a, is thinking or talking about a hardware unit. And maybe because they're still like a babe in this space. A hardware is not something because it does take money to develop something like that. And there, I guess it would need to be a substantial amount of people that use Bitwig and that will want to spend money grabbing a device, or maybe there can be a device like another company that makes stuff like Akai. <laughs> Akai makes hardware for everybody, I feel like, but maybe they can create something specific to Bitwig because currently you can use the push with Bitwig, but it just looks ugly. There's no inspiration in there, the way that this is fat. And speaking of ugly, that is also another point on my list that I just was hoping. Bitwig is dope. You know, it's cool. Like, design-wise, where it is, it's, it's, eh, it's okay. But for it to be an eye-catching, I feel like there needs to be an update. It just looks outdated to me. There's a lot of people who hate the way Ableton look, but I personally love the way Ableton look. To me, it just makes, I don't know, I just like the way it's set up. That's just me. I, I like how it looks. Maybe more options inside of Bitwig in terms of customizing the, the look of it. Maybe we can get that at least. I don't know. Again, I don't know how qualified I am to even speak on it, but like, you know, if you want this to get into more people's hands, you know, somebody like me, I think I qualified a little bit, you know, for it. But I caught on to what Bitwig was doing. I don't know how I discovered Bitwig. I've seen something, maybe something popped up on my feeds and I was like, you know, what is that? And at first I didn't really get into it, but like over time I start to get into it because here's, here's some of the things that I love about Bitwig and then we can go a little bit deeper into my, my list. I think that the way it's designed, people ask me a lot. I did a stream just yesterday and, and people were like, what is that Bitwig thing? You know, I've never seen or heard of it. Okay. Yeah. It's still like an underdog right now, but it's so powerful in what it does. So it's a mixture of Ableton Live. So you, if you're familiar with that workflow, it's got that, a lot of that in there with a side of Studio One Cubase, you know what I mean? And maybe Pro Tools. I don't even, even want to mention Pro Tools, but like Pro Tools being in that, that lane of putting plugins on a track and have a linear workflow. So I guess I would mention Logic. Logic is probably more of an accurate, you know, it's more accurate right now to the point I'm trying to make. But you got Logic, Studio One, Cubase, that type workflow, linear, but then you have the clip launch deal in Ableton. So it has that along with the other dolls combined together and you have Bitwig. Now, the thing I love about Bitwig is I love how it handles the plugins it works off of a sandbox, meaning that if your plugins crash on you at any moment, Bitwig will not crash. You can still work in your project. And also, if your plugin takes a million years to load, then Bitwig, you still have access to Bitwig. You can go to other tracks and you can load up other instruments. You could do normal stuff and just wait on that plugin to load. Hint, hint, contact. <laughs> contact takes a long time, but there was an update today, so who knows? I'll have to test that out and see if they improve the speed. But for things like that, that is a potential crash, especially in Studio One. Those type of things happens. If a plugin needs to update, I think 
somehow these softwares can pick up like, hey, there's an update for you. So we're going to crash the system. We, we just rather do that. So in that case, I rather use Bitwig when I'm playing around with new plugins and I just download, especially like when I do reviews and whatnot. And that's probably why y'all see me in Bitwig more so because I don't know what that new plugin is going to do and what it's capable of. And if something happens or whatever, then that plugin can crash and do whatever it needs to and Bitwig will remain running flawlessly in the background. We need a slicer. Come on, Bitwig, really? Why have, come on. We should have had a slicer. I. There should be a slicer. There's a sampler here. There's a drum sampler, but there is no slicer. There's no way to take a a loop or something like that, which is something I like to do sometimes and replay it back. There's no slicer. I have to use something like Momentum. You know what I mean? That is a free download from Big Fish, I believe. But there should be something natively in the DAW, just like Ableton. In Ableton sampler, you have the options. You have the option to use the sampler or the, the actual sampler, and then you can convert stuff to, you know, whatever you needed to do. You could do that in Ableton, but we we certainly need a slicer. And my other point about this the sampler is we need more engines again i i was gonna say i hate to compare ableton but i guess that is what i have that's what i have to go on because big wig is kind of like the prodigy of ableton so well we, you know there there is their engine when when being creative changing stuff you know, inside of inside of Ableton, there's a little bit more engines where we can change the granular or whatever and, and, and get a little bit more. Bitwig is a little bit more simple when, it, when in terms of that. Now, I will say it is pretty dope how we can go to a clip and we can make edits and move stuff around within that clip. Ableton, you can't do that. Ableton, when you throw some audio in the clip, you that's just what it is. You have the option to warp things and spread and whatever, but that's within that clip. In Ableton, you could probably put other samples. You can grab a sample into that clip within that clip because the clip is just a container, so to speak. So you could do whatever you want. You can split a clip. Oh, well, not the clip. Let's look at the clip as a container when we talk about Bigwig. So just imagine just a four bar and it's a container deal. Inside of it is the samples where the sample live. You can take that sample, split it, move it around. You can like warp one side of it. You can chop in between and yeah, you can do it all inside a bit. Now, so I'll, I'll give that one to Bigwig. Bigwig, you're dope for that. Absolutely. Can we get a arranger? There is markers in here. Cool. Can we get a arranger? I think arranger, having a arranger track is... I say for me, it's important for someone coming from Studio One, that background where you can just create a ranger at the top, or we can call it blocks. We can call it bit block. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And then we have an intro, the verse, the pre-chorus, the chorus, the hook, the, the vamp, whatever. And then click on that block and rearrange and move stuff sideways, left to right, up, down, whatever. You know what I mean? And the whole section follows that instead of doing this, taking a section, highlight everything we want to duplicate and then duplicate it over. The problem with that is if you're in the middle of a song, you kind of got a song structure and you just want to extend the verse by four bars or something like that. Well, you got to take everything after that, move it down and then duplicate that section. That's, that's currently what you have to do. Now, I'm used to Studio One where all you got to do is take a block and you can duplicate. And what happens is once you duplicate, it just pushes everything down automatically. I'm just kind of giving you you guys a, uh, you know, context to, you know, what I'm looking for. I, I, I hope that we can do that for us. The metronome, I mean, it's not a big 
deal. But if we can get the metronome to have the option to turn off the click during play, that would be perfect. Now, currently, the only option is to turn on metronome on or off. And that's it. I would really love if we can have the option to turn on the click when we're recording. I think it's dope for what it's doing. It gives me the, the you know, the the pre-count or whatever. And then when I'm recording, it's got my metronome going. I can stay on beat or whatever. But once I toggle off the record, I feel like the metronome should come off with that. I think that'd be fire. Maybe. But again, that might not be a deal breaker. It's certainly not a deal breaker, but you know, if if I'm going to make a video about what I want, I might as well add that to it, right? My other point is currently right now, and I don't know if it's just me, but when grabbing the edge of a MIDI, especially like when you're completely zoomed all the way out of your, your piano roll, it's very difficult to grab the edge of the MIDI and shift it either way. It's very difficult, which could be the reason why there is a key command that allow you to extend the note back and forth. I think it's shift option or shift control and just hit your cursor arrow back and forth. It, and maybe that's a solution. I learned that the other day on the stream, but um, I don't know. That may not even worth complaining about, but I did notice that versus other dolls I'm in, you know, even when you trying to pick at small media on your computer, you can still grab the edge of it and it'll let you it'll let you, it'll let you nudge it you know extend it or shorten it or whatever i don't know but that's something i noticed i am a complete control user i am a native instrument person native instruments is here to stay guys and there's quite a huge community who use their products so with that being said i actually do like how First of all, again, I must mention I'm coming from the Studio One background. When you throw in the complete, when you throw in Contact, Contact has 16 MIDI channels or MIDI layers that you can actually create 16 MIDI instrument external routing to that one instance you know i'm trying to explain it the best way i can with in studio one you can definitely have like up to 16 that could talk to different channels one two three four five whatever so depending on which one you have and you, if you have it linked properly inside of the contact you you can certainly solve if on channel three and my midi channel three if that's my base well that's what that channel will you know what i'm saying and then so instead of having like several instance of contact, which will bog down my CPU, having one instance, but several lanes that talks to that. Now, Bitwig, you can do that. You can certainly do that. You just need to have several instance or several MIDI channels open, and then you can tell it to, and I've done it several times. But I kind of like how Ableton does it. I like how Studio One does it the best, to be honest with you. But in Ableton, at least now, this is one thing that Ableton has over Studio One is when you have an external MIDI channel out, it has the ability to also receive the audio input of that thing. So if I'm on channel 15 inside of contact, that's synced to a external MIDI channel, just, you know, an extra channel in Ableton, well, I can say, Hey, I want you to pick up channel 15 and it will receive the audio. So if I need to bounce in place, then it takes the audio as well. The problem right now is in Bitwig, it doesn't do that. And if I need to export something out, then I have to solo the, the, the instance where the instrument lives and somehow have the, whatever the MIDI associated with that channel also lit up you know what i'm saying so it's it's a, it's a little bit you know it's a little bit ir irritation going on right there in, in that term but 
you know, I found a work a workaround, but you know, I was just thinking about the the power that Bitwig has, and I will certainly love to take advantage of that. You know what I mean? Because I feel like Bitwig is definitely it's definitely holding his own. You know, especially when we talk about how it handles sandboxing with plugins and like that's crazy. So like this will be perfect to take advantage of the GPU, I'm guessing. I'm not sure, but uh, I hope I explained that. Um, some, sometimes it get weird when I need to explain something. So yeah, that's what I have on my list currently right now. I feel like Bitwig is, man, how come not a lot of people know about this? You know what I'm saying? But I get it. I totally get it. I see the power and the the awesomeness behind this deal, which is why I start doing more in Bitwig. I think Bitwig is fire. I think it does everything. Like, there's a lot of stuff. This is a lot of stuff I like, which pulls me back to Bitwig. I'll go in Ableton because I like the aesthetics and stuff like that. And I do jo enjoy what Ableton is doing in terms of like their 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 note effects and you know they finally allow us to see the mixer in the in in the same deal. We, we you know what I'm saying like these things are pretty exciting, but at the same time, you know after I, I get done playing with all of that there is some things that Bitwig just does a lot better. And so I would just convert over to, so one of the things is Ableton has now allowed us to bounce in place deal. Well, Bitwig been doing that for a minute. And Ableton is, is, is a little different. They don't call it bounce in place. They call it freeze. And then, you know what I'm saying? And it, it, that's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. But in Bitwig, you have the option to bounce in place and then you also have the option to to bounce the pre and post effects so that you could take it to another another track and just avoid the 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 effects on that on that so in, in if you're trying to save CPU you're trying to avoid that then yeah that, that's the option but Bitwig also responds to audio and MIDI on the same track that's 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 pretty cool. Also, the biggest thing for me coming from Studio One is customizing my key commands. That's that's probably like one of the things I love about even working in Studio One because I can customize everything according to my comfort. You know what I mean? When I discovered Bitwig, I discovered I can use the same key commands that I'm familiar with. So when I started working in Bitwig, my workflow was kind of fast so to speak because i was doing some of the same stuff i'm like yeah i feel right at home right here so with that being said big wig is certainly in there with me ableton you can't customize the key command however once you learn them then you are okay and i would say after working in ableton there are some things that i kind of like better like there's a couple of key commands i because I'm you know, trying to muscle memory everything, I kind of went back to Bitwig and, and set a couple, it's just a couple of them, but there are some, there's a lot of things that I like better in terms of key commands inside of, inside of Bitwig because, you know, that's just how I'll, I've always been doing things. That's also the reason why I'd be on these videos, be like, how do you do that? You know, I forgot how to do that because learning key commands from several dolls is like, it's like a task in itself. I do enjoy how I can have several projects up at the same time as well. That's something that Student One can do. I'm used to that workflow and Bitwig offers that. I tell you, it's very helpful when you're working on a couple of things that you need to go back and forth or whatever, or just for inspiration purposes. Say you working in a project for a, a quite a bit of time and you just want to do something new. Well, you could just go ahead and just rock it out with a new project and have the the original one still right there, you know, not even closed down. And then you can go back and forth instead of like shutting down one project and going back. Honorable mention, I feel like 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm going to probably throw this in every video when I talk about Bitwig, but that browser, that browser is dope because you can access the browser almost everywhere in the program. It lives on the right side, but you can also access it from the track. You can also access it from where the devices are. You can also access it in the information area. It, it, you know, there's just several ways you can access it. And then depending on where you access the browser, it's smart enough to know what you are probably going for. So if I hit the plus button in front of an instrument, say I'm looking at my devices in front of it is going to automatically route itself to the note effects. You see what I'm saying? If I go after the instrument, it's going to say, hey, you're probably looking for audio effect. You know, so that's dope right there. Maybe this is an honorable mention as well, but because I am a Studio One user, y'all should know that by now. Um, they did come up with this this new file format export feature. It's called Doll Project, and you can you can export your project from Bitwig and pull it up in Studio One or vice versa. So that is that is dope. It's got me thinking. Like what type of collaboration that they got going on? Because at the moment, it seems like those are the only two dolls that can talk that language. Maybe Cubase. I haven't checked that, but it's like, hmm, what's going on there? But it's dope. You know, it's just like, I feel like they was watching my videos. Like this dude, he keep, he keep using Bitwig and Studio Ones. We just, let's just create something for him. So they can go back and forth from the project and stuff like that. So that's kind of how I feel. Like, why why Bitwig? Why Studio Work? You know what I'm saying? Why not Ableton and Studio One or Ableton Bitwig? I don't know. Other than that, I, you know, I, I don't really have too much. If, if Bitwig don't make any of these changes, I'm cool with its current state. They, 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 they've been making some really cool updates, like some of their plugins they've been re releasing. I'm enjoying what they're doing, like the compressor, for instance. That that compressor is nuts. It's just crazy. And they, they're they definitely some audio guys, and they're, you know, you can really appreciate a company when, when they go in and they, they really, really dive into something. And, like, wow. The compressor is... It's, it's dope. It's, it's just dope. It's like the compressor is made for every situation. Instead of having like several compressors that you will pull for, this one compressor can switch up between different scenarios. If you want something that glue the, the mix, you want something that will fast attack like a 1176, you want something maybe like a 2.8 that's a little bit more forgiving, more smoother, you know, or any other, yeah. And to me, it just seems very intuitive in terms of just workflow. I can automate anything, hit the record button, just start messing with knobs and it will record it. The Mahler deal is dope. Like if you want to get further into it, they have a whole section dedicated to getting in modulation and plugging in stuff and routing stuff and, going around this and like in terms of creativity bruh that i think i think bitwig has that on lock now i will say ableton has the, the the thing that they have over them is the the max for live now it, that kind of feels like an open platform deal where there's a lot going on right there you know, it's, it's a lot of room for, for creativity and, and, you know, and that's, that's like a whole nother next level type stuff there. And, you know, I say between Bigwig and Ableton, they, they both render some really cool, cool options to be creative. And you you know, I'm all about being creative. Studio One, again, is still my go-to, but, for for right now, in at its current state, I've always felt like it lacks creativity. So, 
I hate to keep saying that up, but to bring context to some of my people I know that follows me, that that's usually a question that they ask. So I'm gonna end the video right here. You guys got any comments, concerns? Do you agree with some of the stuff I'm saying? Do you feel like it's even worth spending time to to get bit with? Do you know? I guess this would be my my first time ever like reaching out to them in the video form to see if they listen to the community. You know what I'm saying? So we'll 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 see. And I'll get to report back to you guys and you know, let you guys know what updates that happened. You know. Here we go. It's another a new journey, I guess. Ellup is my name. B culture. Y'all know what's happening. Lifestyle governed by art.